While I still don't have any roof, it's a constant battle to keep the leaves and dirt out of the room. Ah, oh, I just cleaned it not long ago, and within a couple of hours, from the tree, the neighbor's tree, and that one there. That's the culprit, and just keeps creating lots of mess. I need to, need to clean before I can do any work. At the moment, I've got some glue. I'm doing additional ceiling right at the bottom there and right there as well. Even though I have a glue on the other side, uh, I mean, silicon sealant on the other side as well, but I thought I'll just do a bit extra there and all of across there and there just to stop any moisture or anything coming in from, from under. As you can see, some of these dark ones, because I don't have any um, insulation yet or cladding, the water is certainly easing up. So I thought I'll just do an extra silicon to stop any of that moisture coming in. But damn leaves won't leave me alone. This is a 3 mm by 75 mm wide high density impact resistant rubber. I got this from a company called Cluck Rubber, which is um, quite a popular company in Australia, especially in Sydney. They sell all sorts of rubber stuff. So I went them and explained what I actually needed and they were quite happy to direct me to the exact material that I was after. This is, even though flexible, but this is very dense. So this will be placed underneath the internal frame. So basically it will be laid on the concrete and at the right distance, obviously, from the outside frame. And then the internal frame will sit onto it before it gets bolted. And the whole purpose of this rubber um, is to stop any impact vibrations that might hit the internal walls, making it absorbed by this rubber rather than going straight onto the concrete slab and that being transferred into the external walls and going out. And this is not for higher frequency, this is more like the lower frequency you know, anywhere between um, 70, 80 hertz and below, you know, impact, bass, kick drum sounds, it will uh, stop it from um, actually going and it's spreading to the external wall. It was not cheap. This is uh, quite an expensive material. It was about $8 per meter for the 75 millimeter length and by three millimeters. So um, it wasn't cheap, but um, I had to get quite a, quite a bit of it because it needs to go all around the um, perimeter of my internal frame.
sorry, the camera had to be low enough for me to show you that. My head was chopped off. <laughs> so it's quite important to actually have this um, installed underneath the internal frame to um, stop any low frequencies and impact noise going in or coming in or going out. Another extra option which I opted to do is to seal any gap or opening between um, the frames, especially up here, as you can see there, right there, I'm not sure if you can, um, there was a gap there. Normally that's okay for buildings because once the roof comes in and the internal uh, wall comes in, that's not going to make much difference. But it is important for me to make sure that it's still sealed and there's not minimize the number of air gaps between the inside and the outside, as well as the internal and external wall. So basically what I did, um, and this goes all, all, around, um, all around there, so let's just let me go up to demonstrate what I mean is just this tiny gap, about a millimeter gap or so, sometimes not even that, but I had to seal that so that there's no air coming in or out from the internal because this basically has access to the internal cavity between the, um, the external wall and then the internal wall which is about that size there. So I had to make sure that the internal cavity between the two frames is actually sealed. Otherwise, um, the air will actually escape. Let me come down. Step. Otherwise, the air will actually come through this frame, the internal frame, into the internal cavity, and from the internal cavity, up there and out, rather than being absorbed by the material um, here on the external frame. So that's why I had to make sure I could seal it. So that's something to think about as well. So if you are building, making sure that even the external walls, anything that reaches the cavity, that includes all of these areas there that I'm actually pointing, all of these gaps, because that's where the ceiling is and there's an air gap between there and up to the roof. Even though there's going to be um, insulation in the roof and in these areas here as well, but there's air cavity uh, between the ceiling and the roof. And you don't want the air from there escaping and going out from tiny holes. So um, I'll be going around a little bit later on and even sealing the joints as well, making sure that the, uh, the joints between the panels are also sealed. There are only a few where the joint is uh, seen, so they'd be sealed as well. I hope that makes sense. Well, at the moment, I'm at the stage where I'm about to finish off the battens on the roof beams. And once they are done, then the 12 millimeter plywood panels will sit on top and then be covered by um, the uh, weatherproof material. And then the roofing sheets will go on top, which are gonna be metal color bond, corrugated color bond material. And hopefully once I've got that, then I can actually start working on the internals. And I'm hoping that before I do that, um, I will also be putting the internal frames in because it's gonna be very hard to nail once the roof in because there's not much gap especially at the lower end there's not much gap so i have to um, assemble the internal frame just assemble it before i put any of the roofing in and then you know uh, when i assemble obviously i need to drill and bolt it down onto the concrete as well so that it's all ready so once the roof comes in the only thing left is the uh, rafters to go on top of uh, the internal frames so that the ceilings 
um, gyp rock or drywall will sit, you know, will be mounted onto them and so on. So still a bit to go and uh, it's taking me a little bit longer because um, I'm a one man, it's very hard. And then you get rains. I couldn't do anything the whole week, last weekend and pretty much all of this week because it was raining and it was very hard for me to put things up and I had to actually put some covers to protect the uh, plywood panels from, uh, from the inside and that didn't work that well because the wind just blew the whole thing out. <laughs> Even though I had nailed it down, there was a gas wind and just blew, you know, most of it open. But it did protect it for a, for a while. So um, I guess once I get the roof in, then I'm quite safe, then I slowly progress the internal works um, and everything else. So um, very soon I'll be uh, ordering my insulation materials for both external and internal walls. They'll be the same. The ceiling ones, they'll be different because they be thermal ones, not just uh, acoustic. So the, inside the roof, there be the thermal and on top of the ceiling, because there's going to, there are two insulations in between, so on top of the ceiling, there'll be the acoustic ones. So um, see how that goes. Till next time, as always, thanks for watching. Cheerio.